My teen male mom and dad separated when I was 19. My dad eventually remarried my stepdad Brian and my mom remarried my stepdad Joe. Both I and my older brother Cam, 18 male, hate Joe. He's homophobic and misogynistic and so are his sons, teen and nearly adult. And we have no idea why our mom likes him. Luckily, Cam can just stay at dad's. Joe and his boys dislike me because I'm not a traditionally masculine sports guy. I play in a band with some friends. A few are queer and I like flowers, etc. Even though I'm just straight and have a girlfriend because I'm pretty non-conforming, they don't think I'm being manly enough. My dad and Brian are my safe place. They come to all my artsy stuff and support me, unlike my mom, Joe, or stepbrothers. So I try to spend as much time with them over at my dad's. Joe always tries to get me to try out for sports or work out with their sons to put some hair on my chest. I got my permit last month and my dad and Brian have been teaching me how to drive. My mom thought it would be a great idea to have Joe try to teach me so we could bond. I wanted to tell her no that dad and Brian were already teaching me but she wouldn't have it. Two days ago, Joe took me out driving and we got like 30 minutes from the house. All the while he was telling me how to do stuff I'd already learned from my dad and Brian. I told him that and he went on this rant about how he probably knows better and he's trying to keep me from ending up like Brian and my dad. I asked what he meant by that and he told me like a sissy and that I needed to man up. We had to pull over for gas. I was angry so after we filled up and he went in to get something, I drove off and left him there. I went home and I ignored his calls. He ended up having to get an Uber home. To say that my mom and him were angry is an understatement. I told her what he'd said and she told me that was no reason to do something like that and grounded me. So I had Cam come pick me up and take me over to Dad's and I've been ignoring Mom and Joe's calls. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. You took Joe's advice. You manned up and made the right decision. He's a total loser and idiot. Stay with your dad and only see Mom if you can without being around Joe. Joe kept stirring the pot and you just handed it to him to have lunch. Joe has proven himself to be awful, you were forced to go with him, and he lost his chance to be a teacher. Probably not great you left him there, but I have no sympathy for him. People may see this as you throwing a fit over your mom remarrying or you being grounded, but this isn't rebellious teen behaviour. This is, I'm in a toxic environment and have the ability to leave for a safe space behaviour. Do what you need to. Staying safe and happy is more important than humouring morons or their spouses, regardless of relation to you. Exactly. Your stepdad and his loser children can just keep the BS to themselves. I completely understand why you wouldn't want to spend time with hateful people like them. As far as your mom, there is usually a reason why someone protects a homophobe and their actions. Your mom is no help because she doesn't view their actions as wrong, and even if she hasn't said things directly, she certainly isn't stopping them. I try to stay with your dad as much as possible. I'm 100% with you, I can understand having no tolerance for idiots, but next time, just get an Uber yourself so that you aren't committing a crime. Joe isn't worth putting your future in jeopardy over. Not trying to nitpick, but is it a crime to abandon an adult, or is it stealing the car that's the issue? Huh? Everyone's the idiot. The everyone's the idiot part is that as someone with his learner's permit, it was unsafe for you to drive without an experienced driver. So you were the idiot a bit to yourself, other drivers, and the people who care about you. I'm so sorry you're going through this. It's awful and I hope your dad can get you out of that living situation. You're young and made a rash and poor decision in the heat of the moment. And I sincerely hope things get better for you. I'm a single dad. I have five boys, the elder two, 18 and one year younger, from a previous relationship, and the younger three with my late wife, mid-teen, young teen and tween. My older boys both have jobs and contribute to buying their own food and clothes. My mid-teen, we'll call him Jack, doesn't. I don't have a problem with this, but it is relevant to the situation. We're not badly off, but I'm far from wealthy, and with five kids in the house, I have to budget carefully. I can only buy so much food and so many clothes, and the rule is unless you have your own money, you have to accept what's there, and that's it, or there won't be enough to go around. For those who'll say, well then, should have had fewer kids, it's a bit late for that, don't you think? Jack has been unable to keep a job, but that doesn't keep him from complaining about his clothes being too small and uncool, and that he wishes he could eat like his friends, going out to nice restaurants, etc. I understand, I grew up less fortunate than my friends as well and I hated it, but that doesn't mean I can magically change things. Yesterday I came in from work and my younger sons told me they were going to make PB and J's, but they couldn't find the peanut butter. I can't find it either, so I ended up asking my older sons and Jack. 
Jack not only ate the peanut butter, but he's also been stealing food from his older brothers. I told Jack he was way old enough to know stealing was wrong and that he couldn't eat the food that his little brothers needed. He got annoyed and asked if I wanted him to start eating from garbage cans. Now, I provide as best I can for all my children, and while it could, of course, be better, we're nowhere near the poverty level of the whole eating out of the garbage trope. I told him the reality is that if he wants to buy fancy foods and snacks, he'll have to get a job and pay for them himself. He wasn't happy to hear this, but I think it needed to be said. He's six foot two and 140 pounds, not underweight or something. So am I the idiot here? You are the idiot. You said your son is six foot two and 140 pounds. A male at six foot two and 140 pounds is in the underweight category. You are neglecting your children. I'm sorry if you don't want to hear this, you need to figure out the resources now. Mid-teen is very young to expect a child to have a consistent job. If his clothes don't fit, that is 100% on you. Food is on you. If you expected your teen to pay for his own video games or extracurriculars, that would vaguely be different. You're expecting a child to pay for the basics. Well, OP calls clothes that fit fancy clothes and PB&J fancy food. The craziest part is that peanut butter sandwiches are so cheap. That has been my main source of protein throughout college. I can buy a small jar of peanut butter and a loaf of bread for under $10, and it lasts me a week if times are tough and I have no other food in the house. OP is so strung out about a jar of peanut butter. For what reason, exactly? Like, dude, just budget better. That's like 4 to $6, and you even made the point that you're not completely destitute. Food is a priority and he clearly doesn't have enough of it for his pubescent son, lol. OMG dude, food stamps exist. You're not providing this kid with the food that he needs. You'll need to get on government assistance or hit up your local food shelves, etc. If you can't feed all your kids, there are solutions to this problem that don't involve your kid wearing clothes that don't fit and going without food. So many people are too ashamed to use food assistance and it's so damn stupid. No one should be in this situation. This family is exactly why the program exists. Children aren't meant to work and fight their family members for food and clothing. This isn't a third world country. It's the richest country in the world. Stop making excuses and shoving your problems onto your kids more than you have to. I, female 23, have a tween half-sister, Bella, and a young teen stepsister, Maya. Maya and I don't have a sisterly relationship, and I never really liked her. Even when she was a toddler, she was the kind of kid who would cry and yell until she got what she wanted. Basically, she's the reason I want to be child-free. Bella, on the other hand, is the sweetest kid. So a few days ago, my mom asked me to bring Maya home from her guitar class. I was busy with work, and I forgot, so I was about half an hour late. Yesterday, my mom asked me to bring Bella home from her painting class. I was on time and brought her home safely. When my parents came home, I decided to do a prank and told Bella to hide so I could tell them I forgot to bring her home. When I told them, my stepdad was horrified and ran toward the door to go get her, while my mom stood there calmly and told him to relax because there was no way I could forget Bella and that she knew I was lying. Bella was very disappointed and asked me how she learned it was a prank. I told her the truth and said that mom knew how much I loved her and there was no way I would ever forget her. Maya, who was listening to our conversation, had no idea that she was listening, called me a witch. I told her thanks for reminding me why I don't love you as much and she ran to our parents to tell them what I said and now they think I'm an idiot. You are the idiot. They're kids, both of them. Their brains aren't developed and what you said to Maya probably really affected her. It was cruel. You're an adult and should know better. No wonder you don't have a sisterly relationship. Have you even bothered trying to get to know your stepsister? Or do you just treat her like she's less than all the time? To add to that, if Maya is ever in a situation where her parents can't help her, she won't dare to ask her older sister. It doesn't matter if she is your blood sibling or not. What does matter is the fact that you choose cruelty. You've gone so far that you likely can't redeem yourself in this child's eyes. Other people in your family can see your meanness as well. And Opie treated her like that because she had the audacity to cry when she was a baby. And remember, she was a stepchild toddler too, in a house with a new half-sister to boot. So coming into a new home, presumably from a broken one, to immediately be replaced as the baby by a newer, better sister. No wonder she was acting out. 
Hopi, how at your big age of 23 are you saying that to a team without feeling any remorse? Hard to tell who the child is here. You have to know how much more this sort of thing hurts younger kids. You told a probably insecure, hormonal, and already upset teenage girl, who likely looks up to you, that you love her less than the sister that you share a common blood with. You just created years of therapy for that kid. Act your age. My 24 female sister, 29, is mildly autistic, and she's good at masking it, so she wasn't diagnosed until about five years ago. Four years ago, she met my now brother-in-law, 32, who's also autistic and a bit more so. They purchased a townhouse a few months back. They invited our family over for dinner and to show us, which went horribly. It's a nice townhome, and when she showed us to the master, we found out that there were two queen beds. I made a remark asking if there was already trouble in paradise, and my sister said that one bed isn't enough space, that they both get hot, and since they both have sensory issues, they just find it easier to sleep in separate beds. I quipped about how their intimate life must be awful, and my brother-in-law remarked back about how they have a very healthy life, but it wasn't my business. It's natural for us to tease in our family, and we do it all the time. So when my sister showed us the big walk-in closet that they'd made into a room for their ten guinea pigs instead, I made another remark, and my brother-in-law snapped, telling me that I needed to stop making inappropriate comments regarding him and my sister because it makes her uncomfortable. I told my brother-in-law in the past to not call me out in front of everyone like that because it makes everyone uncomfortable. At this point, I was just trying to lighten the mood and made a slide remark along the lines of, there's that douchey frat boy attitude. He dresses and has the face of someone who just got off his daddy's yacht, so he does look like he would be a total douche. My sister was upset and just asked us to knock it off, so we did. We went along with dinner and I noticed how he hovered over my sister like he was trying to protect her from me. Whenever I tried to tease her, he cut me off and changed the subject. Even my parents would put me down for this. I'm not trying to sound bad here, but ever since my sister was diagnosed with autism and started dating my brother-in-law, that's only when I started noticing her displaying symptoms. That's also when we stopped teasing her and walking on eggshells around her. It's annoying and feels like he completely messed up my family dynamic. After dinner, we were supposed to get ice cream, but my brother-in-law pulled me aside and asked me to leave. I was extremely upset by this and told him that my sister only acts like this because she married him, and I told him that he's controlling and rude. Later, my sister called me and told me that she'd like to spend some time away from me and see if my attitude improves at Christmas. Look, I'm not saying that I'm absolved of any guilt here, but I had asked him not to call me out in front of everyone in the past because it's humiliating, and he blatantly overlooked that, and that's what upset me. I was just trying to have a normal night with my sister, and he kept butting in and ruining it. Am I the idiot here? So, let's make sure we all understand. You made fun of your autistic sister and her autistic husband and made numerous jokes about their intimate life, even after you were told it's none of your business, but you, somehow, were shocked and insulted that your brother-in-law called you out for it and then asked you to leave, and you're unsure as to whether or not you're the idiot? Remember, in order for something to be a joke, it has to be funny, especially to the individuals who are the butt of the jokes. If you persist in making the same jokes after the target has informed you that they're uncomfortable with it, you're just a bully. You are the idiot in as many ways as could be possible in this situation. Accept your time out and hope you can find your way back into your sister and brother-in-law's good graces. Why insist on teasing her so much? That seems quite odd and overbearing in a way that is likely harmful, hurtful, and awkward. Do you have no other ways to interact with her? Have you been assessed for a developmental disability yourself? You seem to have a childish and weird love of an unhealthy dynamic, and you need to take a step back and look at the big picture. Maybe your sister spent years constantly trying to suppress her symptoms because she was always the butt of your jokes, and brother-in-law makes her feel accepted. You need to start changing your behavior ASAP. People are waking up to how toxic you are, and you're about to lose the relationship with her, and possibly others, all because you're mourning the days when you could poke fun at her incessantly. My 28 male friends and I have potluck parties occasionally. One of our rules is that it has to be store or restaurant bought. We had a food poisoning incident, so we just said no homemade dishes. Everyone's been cool with it. At our most recent one, a friend invited someone that I'd never met before. She, 20s female, brought her own homemade dish. 
I guess it was communicated that it was a potluck, but not our rule. Whatever, the first time we left the dish out. She brought mashed potatoes. I took a serving. Noticed some dark spots. I just thought it was pepper. I felt something weird in my mouth and fished it out. It was animal hair. I played around with it and found a few more. I was absolutely revolted and threw away the dish. I didn't care that it was mostly full and people were in line for food. I immediately got yelled at for throwing it away. I tell her that dish has animal hair in it. It's disgusting. I asked if she's trying to make us all sick. She starts crying, calls me an idiot and just leaves the party. I discovered she has four dogs. I would never have gotten a scoop of potatoes if I'd known that. It was pretty mixed in how I handled it. Am I the idiot? I can't imagine anything worse than a potluck where everything is store-bought. Ha ha. Dog hair, mashed potatoes or not, your potluck sounds terrible. Even a store-bought potato salad can make everyone sick if handled incorrectly. It's not like food safety is hard. Keep stuff at the proper temperature, wash your hands, and don't cross-contaminate with raw meat or fish. Everyone's the idiot. Maybe take a group food safety course instead of having a potluck. LOL. The group sounds rather insufferable and uneducated on food standards. I thought nobody was supposed to know what other people were bringing. That's why it's called luck. Can you imagine them cutting up store-cooked chicken, then store-bought a salad, and thrice-warmed potato salad with mayo and wondering why they don't feel well? OP, you are the idiot. Yes, the dish needed to be thrown away, but you could have handled it better. Nobody wants that sort of public humiliation, and it could have been a side conversation instead of something so dramatic. Just pull her aside and let her know. She would have probably gotten rid of it herself. She's not even an idiot, just made a mistake and wasn't careful enough. Was it right? No, but it wasn't an idiot move.